Hello and welcome to Nithrania YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and in this video we're going to learn how to play Space Race designed by Jan Sokal, Michal Mikes and Martin Rehožík and published by Boardcubator. First, sort out the cards by their type. These are control cards, these are space race cards. Take all the space race cards in the game, shuffle them and place them face down on the designated space on the game board. Then take the top card from the deck and place it here in the unexplored universe. Then take four additional cards from the deck and place them in this universe area over here in the corresponding rows with the matching symbol starting from the leftmost space in that row. Then choose one set of the mission tiles and arrange them in this area on the game board. Make sure that all the tiles are from the same mission set. You can find the mission set number in the bottom left corner of each tile. Then separate these project tiles by their type and randomly choose one tile from each set. If you wouldn't have the Cold War expansion, choose one tile from each set, then randomly choose one set and again take one more random tile from that set. You need to have five tiles in total. Then take those five tiles, shuffle them and randomly place them on this project area on the game board. Then flip the bottommost tile face up. Then each player chooses the faction tile and takes the corresponding rocket, which you can identify by the picture on the faction tile and all the astronauts and the control cards of the same color. Then choose the standard or thematic setup. For your first game it's recommended to use the standard setup. For the standard setup, first take out all the cards with these RS letters in the top right hand corner of the card, which stands for rocket specific cards. And if you play with the Soviet or NASA faction, take out all the cards with this CW letters, which stands for Cold War. You don't have to shuffle this deck of control cards, you can have them on the table in front of you face down or you can keep them in your hand. Then this symbology indicates that you have to take 14 of your astronauts and place them in your agency, basically in your personal reserve. And then the last one goes to the launch pad. So take one of those astronauts and place it on this launch pad. Then place your rocket on the year 1950 space on the progress track, which is basically a victory point track. And if more than one player starts the game on the 1950 space, the initial turn order is shown over here. And finally, this is the standard symbol you can find everywhere in the game. And this one means that you take five cards from the deck into your hand. Keep those cards hidden from other players. In later games, you can try this thematic setup. It modifies the deck of your control cards and also the number of astronauts you have available and also the position of your astronauts. It also affects the starting position of your rocket and also the starting number of cards in your hand. In a space race, players are directors of space agencies trying to win the space race. In this game, you will play cards into your tableau, into your agency and trigger various abilities on those cards, which allow you to place astronauts to the projects to get points or set your astronauts to these four breakthrough areas. Again, they get victory points based on the area control in each area. And you will also build a laboratory, which is a repository of cards, which you can get back into your agency, or you can score the number of cards in the laboratory at the end of certain rounds. You can also score the victory points from these numbers in these stripes of the same color as your current active control card. The game is played over seven rounds, that's why there are seven mission tiles on the game board. And each round has the following three phases. In the first phase, you can choose any number of cards from your hand and place them face down to this unexplored universe deck. And then you will choose one of your unused control cards and place it secretly in front of you. And that card, when revealed, will determine the type of cards and type of abilities you can activate this round. Then in the second phase, when all players reveal their current control card, you will activate those cards in your tableau, including that control card you have played. And the actual turn order is determined by that control card. 
The first player or players to act are players who chose this yellow control card, then players who chose this blue technology card, then there would be players who chose purple space program cards, and finally players who would choose the red breakthrough cards. Then when all players are finished taking their turns, now in this reverse player order, so starting with a player with the fewest number of victory points and continuing to the first player, each player triggers the abilities at the bottom of their cards in their tableau. This is called a bureaucracy step. And finally, in the third phase, you will activate the mission tile for the current round. The mission tile may instruct you to open the new project, close the bottommost project and potentially score it if this last space would be occupied, which means the project is successfully completed. The mission tile may also instruct you to score all four breakthrough areas. The mission tile may also instruct you to score the laboratory, the number of cards in the laboratory, and these points in the stripes of the same color as your current control card. The game ends at the end of the seventh round, so after you score the seventh mission tile, and then simply the player with the most victory points is the winner. There is no other additional final scoring. In the first phase, perform the following seven steps in this particular order. First, in the turn order, so starting with the player with the most victory points and continuing to the last player, each player draws one card from the deck and adds that card to their hand. Then add one card from the top of the deck to the unexplored universe area. Skip this first step in the first round of the game, it was already performed as part of the setup. If this huge pile of cards would run out, shuffle all the cards in this investment area and create the new draw deck. If this deck would run out, then no other cards would be in the draw deck. Then in the second step, again, in the turn order, so starting with the player with the most victory points, each player chooses any number of cards from their hand and places these cards in the unexplored universe area. If you want, you can also choose zero cards, so you don't have to add any cards into this area. If you would have more than seven cards in your hand, then you must place cards in the unexplored universe area until you have maximum seven cards in your hand. Obviously, you can place more cards in that unexplored universe. When all players are done, count the number of cards in this unexplored universe and the minimum number of cards over here is the number of players plus one. So in a three player game, it must contain at least four cards. If it doesn't, just draw the cards from the top of the deck until you have that minimum number. Then shuffle all those cards and in a two player game, reveal one card from the deck. In a three and a four player game, reveal two cards from the deck. And in a five player game, you will reveal three cards. When revealing cards, Place the card in the corresponding row in the universe area and always place it in the slot with the fewest cards in that row. If there's more than one slot with the fewest cards, place the new card in the leftmost spot. Then each player chooses one of their unused control cards and places the card face down in front of you into your agency. Keep all your previously played control cards stacked like this so that each player can see which cards you have already played in previous turns and keep the last one face down secret from other players. Then in the sixth step, reveal all the remaining cards from the unexplored universe and place them in the universe area using the same rules as in the previous step. Finally, in the seventh step, all players simultaneously reveal their control card and that's the active control card for the current round. In the second phase, players will activate the cards in their tableau. This phase has basically five steps. In the first step, only the players who chose the yellow card as their current control card will act. The second step is the technology step. Again, only the players who chose the technology control card as their current card will act. In the third step, will act players who chose purple space program control cards. And in the fourth step, only the players who chose the breakthrough control cards will take their turns. If two players choose the same type of card, then the player with a higher number of the card acts first. If they both choose the card with the same number, the player who is further ahead on the progress track goes first, so the player with the more victory points at the moment. 
Please note that I have placed these cards over here just for the purpose of the demonstration because I'm actually referring to this control card, the current active control card players chose in the first phase. Now on your turn you can activate abilities on your control card and all other cards in your tableau with the same colored stripe as the current control card. So in this example the orange player can activate this ability, then this one, but not this one because this is a purple ability, not the red one. All these abilities are optional, you can activate them in any order you want, but you can activate each one maximum once per round. There is one exception to the rule, if the card leaves your tableau and for example is placed into your laboratory and then in the same round you place it from the laboratory back into your tableau, you can activate that ability again. Then you can find the abilities on the left side of the card and also on the right side. Abilities on the left side are reusable abilities and you can use them once per round. Abilities on the right side of the card may only be used once per game and once used cover them with other cards in your tableau. That indicates that those abilities may not be used again. However, certain abilities will allow you to uncover cards and that means you will be able to use those abilities again. But remember, each ability can only be used once per round, even if uncovered. If you place a new card into your tableau and the ability on the card has the same colored stripe as your current control card, you can use that ability in the same round. I will explain all those abilities and all those symbols in just a moment. Now, once all players are done taking their turn, there is a fifth step in the second phase called bureaucracy step and players are taking turns in the reverse player order, which means starting with the player with the fewest number of victory points, continuing to the first one. In this bureaucracy step, you must activate all the abilities with this clock symbol at the bottom of your cards in your tableau. These are mandatory bureaucratic abilities. All the abilities in the game follow the same symbology, which contains of three symbols. The middle one always indicates what, here it means the propaganda card, over here two cards, here one astronaut, over here you can see two astronauts. Now the symbol on the left indicates where you take it from and the symbol on the right indicates where you place it. So the symbol over here means that you take two cards from your hand and you place it in your laboratory. Over here you can take a propaganda card from the universe and place it in your agency. Here you can take one of your astronauts from any breakthrough area and place it on the launch pad. So looking at the cards, this ability would allow you to take one breakthrough card from the universe and place it directly into your agency, so into your tableau. This one allows you to take two cards from the universe and place them in your laboratory and so on and so forth. If you are not sure about any of those symbols, you can find them all on your faction tile. Now, if you can take the card from the universe, in this case the breakthrough card, the red card, and there would be no cards available, you have two options. You can either choose one card from the row which is right above that row, but you can only do that if this would be your first ability on your turn. Or the second option, instead of taking the card from the universe, you can take three cards from the top of the deck and place them into your hand. Some abilities will allow you to place astronauts in the breakthrough areas. There are four areas here and the launch pad. At the end of the round, if the mission tile contains the breakthrough symbol, each of those four areas will be scored and the victory points will be awarded to the player with the most astronauts there. Astronauts placed on their side are exhausted astronauts. When you have to place the cards in this investments area, these are your expenses and usually you take those cards from your hand, those would be your expenses and if you wouldn't have enough cards in your hand, you would suffer some consequences this card indicates that you would have to cover this card and not be able to use its abilities. When you have to place the cards in your laboratory, place them somewhere in your play area turned 90 degrees to indicate that that's your laboratory. Some mission tiles will allow you to score the number of cards in the lab and some abilities will allow you to take the cards from your laboratory and place it in your agency. This symbol on the card indicates that the card is a leader. 
You can have maximum one leader in your agency. And if you gain a new leader, one of those leaders must be placed in your laboratory. If you take the new leader and place that leader in the laboratory, don't resolve any abilities on that card. And finally, you can find abilities at the bottom of the cards in this black area. These abilities with this exclamation symbol are one-time abilities. Those are immediate abilities when you place the card in your agency. And once resolved, they have no other effect in the game. These abilities with the clock symbol are mandatory bureaucratic abilities. Some of these abilities are only triggered when you're dedicated. You can be dedicated if you play the control card with a three number. It's also ability at the bottom of that card. You are only dedicated that round. Next round, when you play a control card which doesn't have that dedicated ability, this ability would not be triggered. Another way you have to score victory points are these projects. Each project has a requirement for placing astronauts here. So for example here, every time you put a propaganda card in your agency, you can place an astronaut here. On this project, when you place a card in your agency, for each propaganda level of that card, you can place one astronaut here. That means if I would add this card into my agency, it has two propaganda levels, which means I can place two astronauts on the project. Every time you meet the criteria, you place one astronaut in the standby area. If you meet the criteria on more than one project at the same time, you may place an astronaut on each of those projects. If you wouldn't have any more astronauts available in your agency and you can still place an astronaut on a project, you can take your leftmost astronaut from another project or from the standby area of another project. At the end of your turn, you must place all astronauts from the standby area to the project. When you place your first astronaut on the project, you must place it in any empty space with a blue border or blue arrow. Basically, you may not place it on these two white spaces, for example. Any other astronauts you place on the same project must be placed in the first empty space following the arrows. The same applies for all players. Again, if they would have the first astronaut placed on the project, they can place it on any empty space with the blue border. And then each other astronaut of the same player must be placed in the first empty space following the arrows. That means the next one will be placed over here. If there are no empty spaces left following the arrows, return the astronaut to your agency. Each project has a fixed duration and it's indicated on the mission tiles. We'll get to that in a minute. When the project has to close, if this last space is occupied by any astronaut, the project is finished and players will score victory points. Each astronaut will score the number of victory points printed on that space. So the green player here would score seven victory points. Then return all the astronauts back to the player's agencies and remove the project tile from the game. If the project closes and the last space is not occupied, then the project will close anyway, but players will score no victory points whatsoever. The third phase is basically the end of round phase and it's a scoring phase in which you will resolve the current mission tile. You can find up to four symbols on these mission tiles. This one relates to projects, this one to agency output, this one to the laboratory, and this one to the breakthrough areas. When scoring the victory points, move your rocket forward on this progress track and if you would have to end up in the same space as another player's rocket, move it one space forward. That means there will never be two rockets in the same space on this progress track. When you have to resolve this first symbol with a small plus in the bottom right corner, you have to open the new project, so take the bottommost face down tile and flip it face up. When you have to resolve this symbol with a downward arrow, you have to close the bottommost open project. In this case it will be this one. If this last space of the project would be occupied, players would score the project. If not, they don't score any victory points. Return all the astronauts to the player's agencies and remove the project tile from the game. When you have to resolve this symbol with both downward arrow and the plus symbol, first close the lowest active project and then open the new one. Then this symbol indicates that you have to score the agency output. 
look at your active control card and then sum up all the numbers in the stripes of the same color. In this example, this player would score three victory points. If this agency symbol would have this kind of a multiplier, you would double that value from the agency output. So in this example, instead of three victory points, this player would score six victory points. When resolving this microscope symbol, you gain victory points equal to the number of cards in your laboratory, in this case, six victory points. Again, if the lab symbol has this multiplier, double those victory points. And finally, this is the symbol for scoring all four breakthrough areas. Remember, you don't score this launch pad, and in each area, the player with the most astronauts gains the victory points. These exhausted astronauts count towards the total number of astronauts in each zone. However, in case of the tie, the player with the most standing astronauts wins that tie. If some players are still tied, like in this case over here, both players would score the victory points for that area. So here, both the blue and purple player would score the victory points. The number of victory points you score for each area is this left number next to the breakthrough symbol. This right number only applies in a two-player game. So in our three-player example, each breakthrough area would give four victory points to the winning player or players. In some missions, you can find tiles which only award two victory points per breakthrough area. In other missions, you can find tiles which award five victory points for each area. After resolving the mission tile, flip it face down and you can begin the new round. The game ends at the end of the seventh round after you scored the seventh mission tile and the player with the most victory points is the winner. So that's how you play Space Race. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment sections below. I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on the Patreon page. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Berec and hope to see you next time. Thank you.